Hey, welcome back to Hostess Coach. Today we are going to be making a really simple but delicious easy turkey chili. And we are going to get started because chili is easy and yummy. And you probably have all these cans of things in your pantry. So it happens to be storming, raining here today. And chili is a great thing. Great thing for a cold day. Great thing for a Super Bowl party or any other kind of party. So I'm gonna get started here. I've got two pounds here of ground turkey. But before I do that, I'm gonna add a couple slices here that I diced of bacon. And I've diced them real small. I'm gonna put those in just for a little extra flavor. You don't have to do the, ba do the bacon, but I thought it would add a nice extra um, layer of flavor, especially when I'm using turkey. Turkey can be, this is very, very lean. And I just thought it would be nice to have a little extra flavor profile and a little bit of fat because we'll render the fat off the bacon and it'll put a little bit of fat in this. Now you don't have to do this step. You don't have to add the bacon, but I just thought, what the heck? Let's throw a little bacon in there for fun. So I just diced it up. We'll get it started rendering. This pan is hot, my favorite pan. My large Le Creuset, I love this pan. One of my most favorite things I got for our wedding gifts were these Le Creuset's. I got several and I love them and have been using them for decades now. So just get this bacon going. This pan is very hot. This induction cooktop gets very hot. So we are getting this bacon started. So to that, I'm gonna throw in my ground turkey here and get it started. Break it up a little bit. Okay, there we go. So get that going. I'm gonna cook this till it's nice and brown. You wanna get all the water out of your meat. So any kind of ground meat, of course, works for chili, whatever is your, fa your favorite. Ground beef, pork, chicken, turkey, whatever you have. We actually have some frozen bear in our freezer from a friend, um, a hunter friend that we haven't used yet. So we could make bear chili. <laughs> But today I had turkey in the freezer, so I am using that. Okay. Get this going. It's starting to sizzle. Okay. Sure, I've got my. So get that started here. What is your favorite kind of turkey? Turkey, favorite kind of chili? I think once any kind of ground meat is cooked, I think you can't really tell what it is. <laughs> but this is gonna be delicious. Now, after we brown all this and our onions, uh, we could do this all in the crock pot too. All you have to do is brown your meat and then you could throw all this in the crock pot and forget it and let it go for a few hours and boom, you are ready. But I am gonna get this meat going. See the water starting to come out of the meat and starting to evaporate here, which is what we want. Yummy. Let's see, I'll tip this up so you guys can see what's happening here in the pan. There you go, see? Getting this going. So as soon as it's all, it won't start to brown until the water is released from the meat. So we need to get that water out so that it can start to brown. So it's just, let's just chat amongst ourselves. <laughs> do you like to do your chili in a pot like this or do you do it in a crock pot? I think it depends where I'm taking it. Because I usually will cook it in a pot like this, the whole thing. And then if I'm going to take it somewhere to a party or serve it at a, par at a party, 
it's usually easier to put it in the crock pot, just keep it warm. You don't have to babysit it. And like everything like this, it's always yummier if you make it a day or two before and let all these flavors meld together, it will be yummy. So this is a great make ahead dish for a party or for a family meal or for a potluck, any of those things. I can already smell that bait. The bacon just adds another layer of flavor in here because you know, who doesn't love bacon? <laughs> so the water is releasing here and it is getting bubbly. So I'm going to start here, add my about two cups of diced onion. I will throw that in and let it start to soften up. That is actually one onion dice, but it was kind of a big one. And I chopped the onion very, very fine. Because who likes a big old mouthful of, of onion in their chili? So you can also dice some onion, save a little bit of this onion if you want, and save it for a garnish at the end. If you like um, onion and cheese on your chili like my husband does, you could save a few of these onions for a garnish if you don't want to chop another whole onion. But garnishing this, that's the great thing about chili. You can garnish it with whatever you like. This would be a great for a, that's why it's great. That's why everyone loves chili for Super Bowl because it's all done. You don't have to babysit it while your guests are there if you're having a party. And then you can have all the condiments to go on top. Shredded cheese, onion, cilantro, jalapeno, sour cream, all the yummy things that go on top of chili. A few corn chips you could crunch on top. Yum! So it's all good. We're going to let this keep going. Okay, now you hear we've got a little bit of sizzle going here. We still have a little bit of water evaporating, but it takes a few, few minutes to get the water out of your meat so it'll brown, even though this pan is so hot. So you hear the sizzle? So now I'm gonna start with my spices and start putting some spices in here so that gets really into the meat. So I'm gonna start here with the garlic. Now, you know me, measure garlic with your heart. Uh, four to six cloves, depending on the size of your cloves. Mine were kind of small, so I did six cloves of garlic. So I'm going to throw those in and let those get started. Garlic burns quickly, so you don't want to put the garlic in at the beginning when you're doing the onions and the meat, because it will burn. And we want to keep our garlic flavor. So. Got our garlic in there. And now we're starting to get a little bit of brown here on our meat. It's, it's good. I'm going to move on here to the um, cumin. I'm going to do four teaspoons of cumin, which is basically which is a tablespoon and a teaspoon. How many teaspoons in a tablespoon? Three. So I'm going to do one tablespoon. I love cumin. Yum, yum, yum. And I'm going to do a teaspoon more. So there's the cumin. And then I have some chili powder. Of course, we're making chili, so we need some chili powder. And I'm going to put in, it says two to four tablespoons. Of course, again, measure with your heart. I'm going to do, let's see, like three heaping teaspoons of the chili powder. Okay, and then I'm gonna do some black pepper. I got a new grinder here, so we will break it in. Because we like black pepper around here and I like it freshly ground. So we'll try out our new grinder. I'm gonna have to break this in a little bit, but we're getting some nice pepper in there. And then I have of course, a little bit of cayenne. I'm gonna put maybe half a teaspoon of cayenne. I don't wanna make it too spicy. We like it spicy, but I don't wanna get it too hot. So I'm gonna put about half a teaspoon to start. And if it needs more, 
when we're done, we can always add more, but you can't take it out. So easy on the cayenne if you don't want it too spicy. And then I'm gonna do some garlic powder. Even though I put some garlic in, I'm gonna do some garlic powder too, two teaspoons. So let's get this going here. That's one. There we go. Two. And you can see I'm not adding um, salt at this point because these tomato products have so much salt. So I'm just going to get my spices mixed around there. Oh my gosh, starting to smell like chili. Smells delicious. And then we're going to start throwing in all our cans of things here. Now, if you don't like beans in your chili, no problem. Don't put them in but we love beans. So I have a couple of cans here. I'll show you what this looks like here. You can see we've got beautiful color going here on our chili now with the chili powder. You can see what's going on in there. So I took a can of diced tomatoes, low salt, and a can of Rotel, and I just mixed it real quick with the immersion blender because I just don't like chunks of tomato, especially canned tomato in my dishes. So I just gave that a whiz real quick with the immersion blender so I don't have any chunks and that's just personal preference, but you can just throw in a couple cans of diced tomato. I'm going to start with that, get the tomatoes going in and then I will throw in here. We have two cans of just tomato sauce, again, low salt. And that's just a personal preference. I like to try and control the salt if I can, because I can always put more salt in. So I'm going to add those two cans. I'm actually going to add a little bit of water too with these. I'll rinse these cans out. And then I have two cans of kidney beans that have been uh, drained and rinsed. And then two cans of those. And then I have two cans of pinto beans, drained and rinsed. Now, if you like black beans, go for it. You like other kind of beans, use whatever you like. But I like kidney beans, we like pinto beans. So there we go. Again, these happen to be less salt too. So there you go. And that's just personal preference. So, oh my gosh, looks delicious. Now you could make half a recipe of this if you have less people to feed, but if I'm going to go to the trouble to make things homemade, I want to make enough that I can either serve it for a party, serve it to friends, take it to friends who might need a meal, um, or I can freeze it for lunches or dinner, and we have plenty. So this next thing I'm going to add is a can of diced chili, green chilies diced. So add another layer of flavor here. Oh my gosh, yum. And then I also have, this smells so good. I'll, I have a can of corn that I'm just gonna throw in because I had a can of corn. And chili, like art, you can make whatever you want. Put whatever you want in your, ch in your chili. So I am making it like that. So I think that's everything. Now once this has a chance to simmer for, you know, an hour or so, on low, again, if you're gonna put it in the crock pot, you can put it in right now and let it simmer in the crock pot. But I will come back and taste this for salt and pepper and spices after it has a chance to all get to know each other in the pot. Um, and then it'll be delicious. Now, some people like to add sugar to their chili. I don't, so I'm not gonna add that, but you could if you like it. Some people say that the sugar um, offsets some of the acidity of the tomato but I'm, I just don't, it's just not my preference, so I'm not gonna put, put it in. I am gonna though rinse these tomato cans and put a little bit more liquid in here. I'll show you, it's very thick and it's gonna simmer for a while, so I think it needs a little more liquid. If you like your chili super thick, then leave it, you know? A recipe is just a guide. <laughs> so I'm gonna put, oh, about a half a can swirl it around, get all the tomato out, put it in here, 
swirl it around, get all my tomato out, and then put it in there and boom, we will put it on the stove and let it simmer for an hour or two and see, uh, oh my gosh, smells so good. We'll check for spices, check for salt and pepper. And then like I said, if you're ready to serve it, you serve it with all your favorite toppings, whatever you like. Sour cream, cilantro, jalapeno, um, cheese, of course, onion, and there you have it. Easy turkey chili, ready to go for your next event, party, dinner, lunch, or make ahead freezer meal, ready to go. So that is our yummy chili for today. Enjoy, let me know if you try it. You know, I love to see your photos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time, you know, here on Hostess Coach.